Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to set up an Android TV box. Um, most of the things you see in this video should apply to most boxes because, of course, they are fairly generic. They use most of the same software. Of course, they all run Android, just different versions of Android. But as far as the interface goes, there isn't a lot of difference from one box to another. In this case, I have the Dolomy D5. I've deployed a good few of these now and haven't had one give me any issues, so I've stick, stuck with them. Uh, one thing with this box in particular, when you first plug it in, the HDMI can be a bit stiff getting in there. So if you turn it on, you get no picture. Just give the HDMI an extra little push in there and make sure it's all the way in. I do recommend, of course, all these are Wi-Fi capable, but if you're going to connect it anywhere close to where your router is, I do recommend you hardwire it to your router, as I've done with an Ethernet cable here. An Ethernet cable, you know, you can get for fairly cheap. You probably may even have a couple kicking around. Uh, it, if it's possible, it's always a better idea, especially when you're streaming uh, streaming high bitrate content, as we're going to be doing with this. So I connect my uh, my own Microsoft Allen One multimedia keyboard for setting it up, just to make things easier. Of course, it comes with a remote. This is the remote here. So most of the time you'll never use the numbers or any of these keys down here. There's backspace you may use. Also this uh, globe here will open up the web browser. Most of the time you're just going to be using the circle and these four buttons in each corner. This is your back button here. It'll take you back a page from wherever you are. This is the home button. which will bring you back to the home page which you see right now. This one here is the mouse button. You press it once and it'll allow you to use the arrows to move a mouse cursor around the screen if there's ever anything that gets stuck sometimes just using the remote to go from box to box doesn't agree with certain apps for Kodi it's fine but if you're going to use the web browser or other apps sometimes that can come in handy and this is your menu button which you can use the X the same functionality by just holding in on OK for a couple of seconds I'll be sure to show you how you uh, how you uh, add stuff to your favorites and stuff as well so it's already telling me that the update is ready to install because of course this one here I uh, hardware with Ethernet so it automatically started downloading an update there was one available out of box so I'll just say OK and let that go through I always recommend with any computers phones any devices really if there's updates available install them uh, they're not here to get you, not here to sabotage you, updates are made to fill security holes fix performance issues sometimes even add new features so uh, I always recommend that you do updates if, you're, if they are available in this case, I just had the box connected to a spare computer monitor for for the setup. You can have the audio. Uh, the audio does run over HDMI. There's some different boxes have different capabilities. This one just has an analog uh, analog out for audio. If you wanted to run to a separate thing like a stereo or a sound bar, if you don't have an HDMI capable uh, receiver. This update shouldn't take long. I'll just go over and show you how to uh, connect and complete the update in cases where you don't have uh, Ethernet connected as well. So once the update is complete, it will take a little longer than usual to boot the device because it's still working through the update, so don't worry if it hangs for a minute. Of course, you may never see the boot screen very often because you don't really have to ever turn the device off unless you're going to unplug it to move it somewhere else. Because it is an Android device, just like a phone or a tablet, which you never really turn off. You just charge it when it gets low. In this case, of course, it doesn't have to be charged. It's just plugged in all the time. So if you do find things slowing down, you can use the clean memory function, but probably not necessary. worth noting that on the box most are the same in that they have a micro SD slot as well as USB it's not really very clear here but you can see the uh, micro SD here on the end as well as USB I have my dongle plugged in here for my wireless keyboard you can the war the micro SD is primarily used if you need a flash firmware although if you do have a chip out of your phone or a camera or something uh, go ahead plug it in this, and you can play any media that's on that on this box same as you have a flash drive 
um, certainly plug it in you can play anything you have on that on this as well so if you don't have a smart TV for example and you want to look at some pictures you may have on a flash drive on your TV it's good for that as well but really just using these things for Cody is kind of a waste really there's so much it's, it can do uh, you know a lot of people are going crazy over the NES minis the mini Nintendo's this uh, holiday season and uh, anything you know you can play all those games on this too all you need is a gamepad right so when this is done of course you don't really need to change anything you're you know you're gonna keep it on English uh, you may notice out of boxes in this case you can see uh, the edge of the screen isn't going right until to the edge of my monitor so you can use the arrows to increase it or decrease it to uh, make it go all the way up and fill the, your screen so in this case I put it right on 100 and now it fills up the whole screen it's you know from box to box TV to TV it's always different in this case I have Ethernet connected there's a little demo some shortcuts you can just skip through all that and then you get the home screen here so let's say if you hadn't had it connected by via Ethernet and you wanted to first of all connect Wi-Fi I'll go over to settings here on the right once you go in there obviously now this will look a little bit different from if you hadn't done it um, in this case Android has been upgraded so it has a different settings uh, settings menu but of course you would go in the network and Wi-Fi and pick a connection enter your password you know nothing too difficult you to do it on your phone all the time or your tablet I don't think many people probably have much trouble uh, connecting to Wi-Fi um, if you never got a chance to fix the, your display previously, you can fix it here. Most of the other settings, of course, I always fix the date and time, of course. You go under here. You can leave automatic date and time on, but the time zone won't set correctly on its own. So, of course, it's going to be Newfoundland in most cases for us. If you're watching this video, I always turn off the 24-hour format. And you should notice the time is correct. So once that's done, you can also change your location so you get the correct weather here on the top of the screen. So if you use the arrows to navigate up to the top until this is highlighted, you can just say OK and type in the name of where you are. So in this case, for a customer in Marystown, so I'll enter in that, hit OK, and now the proper weather for there. Um, of course, you have Google Play, so you can go in just like on a phone or a tablet and install any app you can think of pretty much obviously this thing doesn't have a camera so it's no good for snapchat or something like that but you can certainly facebook comes pre-installed already but you can install any app really i installed sirius xm radio app for somebody yesterday uh if you subscribe to to xm you can use the box to get that in your house uh and like i said there's a lot of things this can do and there's a bunch of shortcuts down here in the bottom row as well uh, you have a web browser and there's a media player uh, YouTube is right here. You can change which ones show up down here by pressing the plus here on the end and pressing OK on that and just either adding or removing a check mark next to any apps you want to show up. So, but for most people, you're mainly going to be using Kodi, which is the big uh, icon here on the left. So, we'll go in there. Now, on first run out of box, uh, there's going to be a lot of updates it has to do, which will take a few minutes. Uh, five or ten minutes tops you should be good um, I'm going to go in so of course it comes with a number of add-ons already uh, Exodus is the most popular one for TV and movies if that's all you're going to be using that's probably all you're going to need uh, if you're into more specific things you know like sports especially even things like you know I would never recommend anybody watch it, but uh, there's channels there for anime and weird stuff like that. Uh, there's channels for everything you can think of, pretty much. You can also change which favorite channels you have here on the bottom. Like, there's five there right now. If I go under add-ons here, just under videos, you will see there's a few more here already installed. Uh, I'll show you how to change which ones show up here after. And there's already a bunch of repositories installed that you can add more add-ons from without having to add a source. 
if you had to add a new source you would do it under file manager here but uh, we won't do that right now we'll just go into settings and go down to add-ons so there's like I said there's already a number of repositories that come preloaded on these devices and, and it changes from device to device you usually get this the first time as well it just says log uploader not compatible just say yeah sure that won't bother you anymore after that if you go down to install from repository uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of there already so you can pick one in specific if you know what you're looking for or just say all repositories and once that loads up just go under video add-ons and you'll see there's a whole again depending on which box you have uh, if you just buy something that doesn't have any, doesn't even have Kodi installed. If you just install Kodi fresh, there will only be a couple of uh, you know non-specific things. But uh, another tip for your scrolling menus: uh, if you're at the top of a menu and you want to go right to the bottom, instead of press down, 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 if you just press up once, it'll bounce off the top and go right to the bottom, which I use a lot because obviously it saves a few button presses. I'll also show you how to change the layout of all these menus as well because it's comes in handy a lot of people prefer different uh, layouts for the movie screens so you can see right now it's uh, installing a lot of language packs because of course these boxes are shipped all over the world so they need to come preloaded with a lot of different language packs so it should only take a few minutes for that to get out of the way So yeah, once the updates are done, you can just go under video add-ons here, and you'll see a list of all the ones that are being pulled from all the repositories you currently have installed. And again, that's just kind of scratching the surface because there's always more out there. You said to add new sources. For the average person, you should find most things you need already pre-installed. Scroll through the list. Anything you, you see interesting, just pick anything at all. Hit OK and say install. Once it's installed, then you'll see it on your uh, video add-ons list. And of course, Cody has other uh, other capabilities of playing music and viewing pictures and other things. But most of the time, you'll just be using the video add-on section. So, of course, we use the back button to come back here to the Cody homepage. And if we go under add-ons now, you'll see the new add-ons that you and you've added as well. Now, if you want to change what shows up here go back to system now in this particular version uh, they've enabled the skin option here under system but in other versions of Kodi you may not see the skin you might have to go under settings and go to uh, appearance that way under appearance you go to skin and then settings and then on the bottom add on shortcut so here you can see the five that we already have there so I'm gonna add I'm going to change those. This does take a few seconds because it has to pull a list of all the repositories. So in this I'll put here. So I've changed them there. I'll use the back button to go back. And now under videos, you see there are different channels. Another thing, if you don't like this plain old gray background at the Android logo, you can change that as well. Once again, under settings, appearance, and uh, skin settings, if you go under background options, you see enable custom background. So all you have to do is turn that on and then the next option below that will stop you and gray it out and you can select it and then you pick a location. So of course you can plug in a flash drive for example and copy a picture off of that or you can just use the web browser that's built in to find a picture you want and download it and then just find it in the folder you saved it in. So now as far as using the add-ons, again, if you're just looking for TV or movies, most of the time you're going to be using Exodus. And from there it's pretty straightforward. If you've used Netflix or anything like that, you shouldn't have any trouble with this. Uh, 
first two options are just movies and TV shows. The other options like my movies, my TV shows, that links to uh, IMDb accounts if you have one, so you can log in, but a lot of people probably don't even know what IMDb is, so don't worry about it. So either you look for a movie or a TV show, pick one, and they'll give you a bunch of different categories you can sort by, or you can go right to the bottom. And as I said before, if you're at the top, just press up once, you'll go right to the bottom, and then you hit OK and search for something in particular you're looking for. Works the same way for TV. Now, once you, we'll just try this for example now, you go under new movies. Anything you can highlight really under these add-ons, if you can highlight it, you can probably add it to your favorites. So to add it to your favorites, you can just press the menu button as I showed you before, or hold OK. When you hold OK, you'll get this context menu where you can say add to favorites. Uh, I'll just go under new movies here. So let's say it's one of these movies, for example, hold OK or press the menu button, you'll get the context menu, and then you can say add to favorites. If, when you're on any of these menus, if you press the left arrow, you'll get this menu here, where you can just press OK on the first option, and you can scroll through a bunch of different view types. Uh, you can use this on any menu within Kodi, so it's uh, you can just find the one you like the best. A lot of people prefer the uh, thumbnail view, which is right here, the movie posters. Uh, Again, you just press left from the edge of the screen and pick the one you like. I'll just leave it as the default one for now. So we just added that movie to our favorite, so we'll go back here to the Cody home screen, and if you see the star down here in the corner, bottom left corner, you hit OK, and there's the movie I just added to the favorites. Same thing works, you hold OK again, and I'll just remove that. And there we go. Whenever you select something you want to watch, you pick it and then it'll give you a bunch of sources where you can stream it from. So you, if it's something fairly new, common, usually the first one will work. If you have trouble, try the next one. If maybe if it's something obscure or... So we'll just say most popular here under TV shows. Game of Thrones, I don't watch it personally, but we'll just use it for an example. Season 1, Episode 1, so once we pick it now, it'll start to, uh, Exodus will scour all the sources where you can get it from and provide you with a list. Usually doesn't take too long. And there's your list of sources. So again, you just try the first one. And something, like I said, popular and common like this uh, wouldn't, won't be hard to get. And there it is. So once you have something up, if you want to pause, fast forward, stop, you press OK again and you'll get the controls here at the bottom. Uh, so in this case, I'll just go ahead and stop. There's some other options over here, like subtitles and audio options. Most people are probably never going to need to fiddle with those. I'll just hit stop, and there we go. If you just use the back arrow to go back once something is playing, it will continue to play in the background. So if you want to keep your position, it's important you pause it before you leave that screen. And that's essentially it, most of the important things. I'm going to make sure now I use the power button down here to exit the program so it saves all my changes. As you can see, the scrolling text on the bottom of the program there, uh, this is version 16.1 of Cody. Jarvis is codenamed. Uh, 17 is already in beta. The release candidate is about to come out, and they're already planning for version 18. So uh, I've been playing around with version 17, Krypton, and it's uh, a big departure in terms of layout. So this, I'm sure it's going to cause people some trouble getting used to that once it comes out. 
but certainly you can continue using 16 for a while. Uh, probably should have said at the beginning, but uh, I don't recommend these boxes. If you're on the Bjorn Peninsula here and you're using Bell aligned internet, I don't recommend you get one of these. Although I did set one up for somebody last night who had Bell aligned and it was plenty fast enough to use. I was impressed. Most people who have Bell aligned DSL, it's, uh, it's useless. Um, until they start offering fiber optic like they have in other areas, the DSL they're currently offering is very, very slow um, and not really capable of doing the kind of high quality streaming you're going to do with a device like this. Um, another thing too, as I said in the beginning, these boxes are all fairly generic. There's not a lot of difference from one to the other. So beware of people that are charging a lot of money for them. Like if you've paid more than $100, you've been ripped off. That's, that's the fact of the matter here. Uh, the most important thing is you get one, whenever you pick one out, you have to do a little bit of research. Make sure you get one that has the right CPU in it that allows, for example, the ones that I sell, I make sure I get the ones that have allow 4K uh, playback. So if you have a 4K TV or end up getting one in the future, you'll be able to take advantage of that. Uh, a lot of people cite, you know, having more RAM than the others or stuff like this. Um, I've never seen the memory usage above... I've never seen it hit 80% and it's uh, an only one gig, so you don't really need another gig. You're only running one application at a time. It's not like a computer where you might have, you know, a spreadsheet open and Facebook and, you know, a music player. You're only doing one thing at a time, so you don't need more RAM. That doesn't affect the processing speed anyways. That's about it, of course. Now, the purpose of this video is if, if I set this up for you in your house, all this will be taken care of, but in some cases, it's not feasible for me to go to a specific person's location too far away so uh, this video should get you through most of the setup certainly give me a comment or uh, a message if you have any other questions and thanks for watching